Hey there, baseball fans. Nathan Rohde and Shooter Hunt here with another episode of Coffee and Curveballs. Shooter, it's Super 60 week, so let's take a look back and go to the loaded year that was 2018. Yeah, what I, what I love about this look back is now those guys have kind of gone through their three years of college. So we can look at how the draft class is done, the guys who did sign because this was such a mega event, how they're doing in pro ball. Mm -hmm. Well, starting at the top, the all time, the, the big time performer in 2018 was without question, Jared Kellenick. Just had an absolutely huge day. It was his second time being at the Super 60, ended up being the sixth overall pick to the Mets and was eventually traded to the Mariners and last year made his major league debut. Yeah, and the kid was a machine. Just thinking back, the, the impact it had on me in person was astounding. Mm -hmm. He was hit backspinning balls that didn't get 10 feet off the ground to the back of the net at 100 mile an hour exit velos. Video does not do it justice, just how loud his batting practice was. He ran hard, he threw hard. Everything this guy does is 100%, and it continues to be. Uh, but in person, he had tons of uh, fame already, did not have to be at this event. But he came because that's just how good he is. He's never afraid. Mm -hmm. I think it was after that day that you saw him that you started touting him as the one-one guy for that year. And looking back, pretty uh, pretty good case for it. <laughs> uh, but speaking of one-one in 2018, we had a high schooler out of New York, Fox Lane High School, by the name of Henry Davis. It was really about the defense for him on that day. But he obviously went to Louisville, and last year was the one-one pick to the Pirates. Yeah, what's funny about Henry Davis is it was an absolute hand cannon from behind the plate. And that's the thing that stood out. I'm behind there, I'm watching the carry. The ball's exploding through the mitt with serious carry. Um, and then he tops up to the plate. Okay, yeah, this guy's probably going to be a 7-9 to nine hole at Louisville. But he'll, he'll sit behind the plate. And he's a leader. We've got to love the intangibles about this guy. But hitting-wise, we're just like, oh, he's a nice hitter. But obviously, he goes on to Louisville and never stops working, continues to rise. And, oh, yeah, he's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Indeed. And then we also had an outfielder by the name of Alec Thomas, now a top prospect in the Diamondbacks organization. That day for him was kind of quiet. Didn't really, you know, have a, a lot of uh, loud rounds of everything across the showcase uh, that he did. He actually fell out of the first round. You know me, I was pounding the table as him as a first rounder. But now he's one of the top prospects in the D-backs organization and, uh, you know, making me look good, I guess. Yeah, I, I think he's doing just fine. He's a local kid. He'd been on the scene for four years. I remember uh, talking to Dunk about him even as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he got there. He still was that cool dude. He can get out there um, and, and still made an impact. Even though it's in the winter, you knew that he was going to get drafted early, which he did. The Diamondbacks were probably juiced up to get him that late. Uh, because he fell down into what the supplemental or second round, uh, but outstanding. Looking forward to his big league big league debut coming soon. Mm -hmm, indeed. And then one of the better pitching performances that year was Ryan Cusick. Ended up going to Wake Forest. Was a first rounder in 2021 to the Braves. Uh, I just obviously remember that day. Some big time velo. Uh, which continued to trend well at Wake Forest. Uh, but he also had a pretty good changeup, if I recall correctly. Yeah, and it was obviously that physical frame. And and at that time, kind of getting that 90 to 92 range, hey, this guy's bringing it pretty good. When he used to hit 95, there were a lot of eyes open. Mm -hmm. and, and 2018 really ushered in that age of velocity coming earlier on in the February, March that we're seeing now. And it also brought in all this new technology that we were utilizing with, does this guy have a three or four pitch arsenal? No, but this fastball is explosive and it gets those, it's going to get those swings and misses. So that's what Brian Cusick brought to Wake Forest. And it's a good reason why the Braves popped him in the first round as well. Mm -hmm. And then we also had Alex Benellis there that year, who obviously always been a very big, big physical guy, but he ran a 6'6, 104 mile an hour exit velo, 92 in the infield. Obviously went to Louisville, put together a pretty decent career at Louisville, and then was a third-round pick of the Brewers and has since been traded to the Red Sox. Yeah, I mean, talk about a tough year to be coming up in Wisconsin right behind Jared Kelenic, but Benellis was a dude in his own right. He, mm -hmm. he touched on it all, filling the stat line, uh, physical frame. He was great at Louisville coming out of this. But I do remember, like, this guy just filling the stat sheet, and he's ultra-physical. And this year, him side-by-side -side by Kelenic, oh, wow, what they could have done at Louisville if they were both there. Um, but the Red Sox traded for a good one. I, I think he's undervalued right now, and he's going to bring some big-time pop to Fenway. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Another one of my favorite guys from that 2018 high school class, Drew Rahm, a left-hander who was out of Kentucky, ended up being a fourth-round pick to the Orioles that year. 
uh, and was really good this year. Had a great 2021 campaign, uh, topping out at Double A. Yeah, and I think he was our breakout star. We were all expecting mm-hmm. coming in. Hey, Rody, Dunk, we love this left-handed arm. But he came in and he showed out, looked the part, gets popped, did a great job. Um, I'm expecting him to come up with the Orioles pretty soon too, especially coming off that big 21. Mm-hmm. And then one more guy who was a two-way guy, even though he didn't pitch at the Super 60, Spencer Schwellenbach was a 2021 second-round pick of the Braves. Uh, obviously went off to Nebraska after his high school career uh, and put together a pretty good one for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, and, and you said he didn't pitch. He did two-way at Nebraska. But what I remember from the Super 60 was this guy just has that it factor. There's a confidence around him. And it's not cockiness. It's confidence. He goes out on the field, expects to succeed. He can hit. He can field. He can kind of do it all. And I think that's what helped him become that big-time arm where he had some big wins. I think at Arkansas he had a big-time win in the regional. Um, but that's what it's ha- allowed him to catapult into that upper echelon of college arms and get popped early last year. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So that's a look back at the 2018 Super 60. Now we're going to see who's next at 2022, which is the 20th annual one. Be sure to check out prepbaseballreport.com for plenty more coverage heading into the event and coming out of it next week. But as always, for Shooter Hunt, I'm Nathan Rohde. This was Coffee and Curveballs. And until next time, we'll see you guys at the ballpark.